Now I want to continue working on the agents and I want to ensure that we are removing an agent from a gen server when destroyed. So how do we destroy an agent? Well, the uh, bullet manager, give us some more space here. The bullet manager is listening for the trigger, right? Trigger squeeze and then it does fire bullet at some point we check our own bullets to see, to see if we should remove something so in fire bullet we go down here and if we own the bullet uh, we check the bullet for intersect is that correct let's see we're animating it and I think we're checking all bullets for intersect. Every every client is, but we are only removing things for our own bullet. <clears throat> so only remove targets when we own that bullet. So here we are emitting uh, outgoing because it's the other person that needs to feel the pain. We don't need this out at all. So we're sending this to the member damaged. We don't need that. That's fine. Then we're sending a targetable. But here maybe we can split this in two. Targetable or it might be a um, agent. So else if it's targetable, I think you could emit that. But we want a history to make it symmetrical. I think else if um, the pick mesh is an agent. Picked mesh is agent. Give me a mesh, which is a Babylon abstract mesh. And the way we're creating the agents now. Let's see, let's see, let's see, we're listening to target, so target hit, remove targetable, and then we're doing something special here. Which I think the agent should handle its own demise in its own different way. So here's, yeah, here's how we determine if it was an agent. So I'm going to copy this into this logic over here. So if, let's call this picked mesh, picked mesh has metadata and the metadata has an agent name that is not undefined, then we should return true. Actually just return this. mesh is agent and therefore if this picked mesh is agent and the hit test picked mesh then do something else if it's targetable then do that so in this case, I think we want to have everybody get that message, but you can get that message earlier, right? Yes. Yes, I think I probably can get that message earlier because we want it to be 
responsive. And so that's probably fine. I'm just thinking for the types. We have agent spawned, agent directed, and we kind of want uh, an agent I guess this is symmetrical. Target hit. It might be fine because this is a generic. Okay, so I guess if this is sending outwards and inwards, it's fine. Yeah, I'll keep the original design. This is fine. Go back, go back, go back. Go back to this bit about agent here okay 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 so we fired a bullet oh sorry bullet manager bullet manager this thing fired a bullet if it is targetable which we've already made um crowd agents targetable then we're gonna emit the target hit event. And then in the target hit event, we go remove targetable, which then if this picked mesh is agent, give me the picked mesh and you can say the agent is damaged and emit a local message with the agent name agent is damaged We might want um, this to behave in a different way because it doesn't actually have physics and postures and all that kind of stuff. And tight targets might want to be respawnable. Mm, you might need a different kind of system to keep track of that. Let's move, let's lift this out. So we're going to complicate things. So coming up here, um, target hit. We need the entity ID here. So let's get the Let's go remove targetable, gets the picked mesh and direction. Let's just grab this. So copy. And here's the entity ID. Here's the direction. Let's go. So if this is a pick mesh, we will uh, send that local message. 
Otherwise, we know it's already a targetable, so we'll just send this. Might not be removing it. Let's rename that to affect. So remove target of target above should just be affect target above, and we don't want to permanently remove it. I think we just want to do that and then wait a bit and then bring it back. So everybody is playing this animation, right? Everybody is playing this animation. Everybody is removing it as well. In the effect targetable, we can just get the pick mesh and the direction. So pick mesh will be a mesh. Pick mesh will be a Babylon abstract mesh. And the direction will be a Babylon Vector 3 and uh, let's give it at least two. Uh, if there's no picked mesh, return. Actually, we don't need that guard because we can put that guard up here. Pick mesh. If there's no pick mesh, if no picked mesh then just return there's nothing to do here otherwise if the pick mesh is an agent release that otherwise affect the target little targetable in some way i need to change this function call to be using the pick mesh and the direction over here. If it has a physics imposter, which means that it was moving in some way, then cancel it out, dispose of it, remove the physics imposter, stop any animation that's on it, and then set a timeout to uh, linear scale Physics imposter new mass, and then we set. Okay, so we set an impulse on it. Is there a way to set impulse? Impulse apply impulse with a vector three and a contact point. I think this is better. Vector three Here's a direction and maybe that's fine to scale by maybe and then a contact point mm, this is something we want so when we touch yeah I think the pick mesh can supply a point let's go back to the part where the bullet actually makes contact hit test so what do we have we have the entity ID the position the pick point Yes, so we do have the pick point. 
which is a position pause so we want that we want that And so picked mesh, found it, then the direction is this, and the cost picked point would be vector 3 from array event p and pause. That's the pick point, and then we should say picked mesh, picked point, and direction. This picked point, which is a Babylon vector three. Then apply impulse at this picked point. What was the direction that we sent originally with this bullet? When we send this, this direction is simply the direction, the ray direction. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll see how powerful it is. It applies an impulse, so it should send it flying. Affects the target of all sets. I think we had to set a timeout because maybe there's some race condition where you remove this, so we made this small. Uh, we apply an impulse. And then... That sends it flying. And then I think we should store its current absolute position. So const previous position equals picked mesh position absolute position and clone and then set another timeout to after 10 seconds or something, return it back to its spot. Uh, so picked mesh, absolute position equals previous position. Cannot assign, it's a read-only property. How about set absolute position and put in this previous position. But we'll do it after uh, 10 seconds. Because this doesn't actually change the, the entity's position, it doesn't emit any events, no harm, no foul. It'll just come back. It'll reappear. Okay, and then on to the message for the uh, 
uh, pick mesh, uh, the agent, we go agent damaged, emitting an event. Which we might want to reuse some of this flying stuff, make something, send something flying. But um, I think this is going to involve points and score, so maybe we can abstract that out to a utility to send something flying. We may want to send the impulse direction and all that kind of stuff. But first, let's see what agent damage does. So that goes to the agent manager and agent damaged would be received here and it will just delete the agent. This delete the agent will find its index and remove it from the crowd. Then it will dispose the mesh and dispose the transfer. So it just removes it. Ah, but without a message to the to the gen server, it doesn't ever know to remove this from the gen server. So we hit a target, the target immediately removes it because we want that to be responsive. But we do need to maybe send something inside the target, like we might need the agent index in there. Because then we could remove it from the from the data. So knowing a little bit about the target. In fact, the target doesn't have an entity ID. So if we're just doing this thing, I do want these to be symmetrical. It just it's no sense in making it too generic because this has an entity ID. This is not really an entity. So let's make a new kind of message for it. Go to event types, event names, and I think we'll say agent damaged. Let's just say hey, agent hit, and then it becomes center, like that. And then other types, event, oh yeah, we're going to want to turn this on, so any changes to event names will get recognized. Then over here, we'll do event name dot agent hit. And the payload would be very similar to this, except we'll have the we'll have the name instead of the entity ID, the position and the direction. That sounds fine. So we need to use this message in the bullet manager. Okay, so if we hit something, we're going to check this thing. So if, in this case here, else if in this case is going to do uh, this um, pick mesh is agent give me the hit test picked mesh but this is an agent we're going to emit the 
client name will be agent hit agent hit and this will be the name this will be name except it will be hit as pick meshed metadata and agent name probably could just store this payload to be reused so we'll cut in const payload this and say payload here and make this a payload as well Here, event hmm. All right. okay we can do the same thing over here cut on payload here is an event and it's that and this is a payload This is also a payload. Okay, so we are now distinguishing agent hits from targetable hits. So we're sending these two things. And so we also need to listen to it. So we're going to listen to the first type of target hit there. So blast target. fired upon so this is target hit and you're gonna get the pick mesh return here that's fine get the direction and pick point hey, let's just copy this part here we're gonna do something with the agent hit so if the agent is hit then Let's copy some of this. Pick mesh. See if there's a pick mesh. If there isn't, return false. You get a direction, pick point, and then you're going to say agent damage locally. Actually, you don't need this in direction now because you're sending this target. You can just listen to this on. on the uh, agent manager side so we can cut that entirely this thing only looks at targets now and then uh, we don't need to check if it's a crowd agent we're just going to do affect the targetable And then we'll go listen to incoming on that side. So let's go to agent manager. And we got the about agents. We're looking for agent spawn, agent directed, agents directed. We don't need agent damaged. What we need to do is listen to incoming on agent hit. I'm going to find a pick mesh. If there's no pick mesh, don't do anything, but there should be. Sorry, name is what comes in. So we're going to get the const agent name is equal to the event payload 
the name. And then, and currently we're not actually receiving these. We're only getting the name. Is that right? Let me check the type. Agent hit, no, name, position, direction. We are getting those three things. Name, position, direction. So we are, we are getting these things. And we're just going to just delete the agent for now and give it the agent name. So this should clean it up on the front end. Now in the back end, we are going to go through to the uh, space server and it's going to look at agents directed which updates a certain map for the latest locations and agent spawned will put something into the map and if we get agent hit uh, agent hit is not an agent remove it's just um, you know animate it in some way we need a new event which is actually agent hit but let's make that a to do for now let's actually let's do handle it so handle cast event agent hit event don't care about the pid there's the tuple in the state and let's just use this to handle the state so we want to say that the new state is equal to the old state but change out the agents and do a map dot delete of state agents and the key is event payload name. That's really all I care about now. And that's it. You're just going to delete that. That gives you a new state. And then you're just going to handle event with the tuple and the state. That should remove it from the gen server. Um, let's just see if anything broke. If I emit something that says it was removed, let's see, outgoing event, event, and I need to give it a name. So I need to know the space ID. Let's get the space ID summary. So space ID equals this. Pace ID is what I wrote. Space ID. And let's get the summary. So, space server summary and space ID. And that gives us a look at this. It's got the uh, agent. This is the agent. And then I want to say. 
that's the name and then don't really care about these other things but we can say pause three and what was the other thing direction and then the event is I believe it is agent hit seven two hundred so if that thing's moving around if I go outgoing it should remove it from the gen server and give me a summary again did not remove it from the gen server uh, why is that why is that um, perhaps I needed to restart my server It didn't remove it. Why? Agent hit is that? Yeah. So let's see. Space server. We're going to handle the cast, agent hit. Maybe it didn't match the name. we can just do space server uh, process event process event yeah event with the space ID event atom is uh, agent hit atomize event becomes M is the seven two and P is uh, another map with the name symbol as agent and QBCK and then the pause is something and direction is something close that object where are we at uh, it's looking like this open open Close, close. Okay. And then what do we need? Then we need the PID, which is nil. Did that work? Okay, that did remove it. So, did 
I just have the wrong kind of thing. What is this thing? Cannot read properties of undefined where. to put this inside the set timeout because things might have changed by the time you do this. This is on line 39. Well, I think I just need to jump into VR and try it. Let's give it a try. <laughs> 